Well, then we continue with Jesus' temptation in, in verses 5 to 6. It says, Then the devil took him to the holy city and set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written. You know what the devil is about to do? Quote scripture. He says, for it is written. And the devil begins quoting scripture here. He says, he will command his angels concerning you, and on their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. The enemy wants to attack your identity. Because remember, the devil just said, he says, if you are the son of God. He wants to, he wants, he's trying to cast doubt, even in Jesus, of who he was. The enemy wants you to cast doubt of who you are in Christ. He says, if you're the son of God, if you're the son of God, then you can do this. The enemy is trying to capture and grab and steal your identity in Christ because he knows the power that you hold when you know who you are as a believer. When you know who you are as a Christian, you have power through the Holy Spirit who lives on the inside of you. You remember how Jesus answered the first temptation? Right? Jesus answered, it is written. That's how Jesus responded to the first temptation. It is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. So what does the devil do? Right. He decides, well, you use scripture, I'm going to use scripture. And, but the devil takes the scripture and then he distorts it. He tries to twist the word of God when he said, for it is written. When the devil said, it is written, he will command his angels concerning you, and, and their hands will not will bear you up, lest you will strike your foot against the stone. The devil is constantly trying to distort and twist the word of God. This is straight out of the Bible, from Psalms 91.11. That's what the devil was quoting. The devil knows the Bible. He knows it very well, probably better than most Christians. He's quoting the Bible to Jesus, trying to get him to sin trying to get him to make a misstep. Have you ever had someone take the word of God and twist it to you? Like take the word of God and says, well, you know, hey, God is love, right? Yes, that's the truth. God is love. Right? Well, people are going to hell, right? Well, yes, people are going. That, that's the truth. Well, why would a good God, a God that is love, send people to hell? Like, whoa, whoa, whoa. That's not truth. That's not in the word of God because... God is not sending people to hell. In fact, he sent Jesus as our Lord and Savior to save us from hell. God's not sending people to hell. But people take the word of God and they try to twist it. Use a couple kernels of truth. God is love. Yes, that's truth. People are going to hell. Yes, that's truth. Well, that means God is sending people to hell. No, 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 that's not true. We are on our way to hell because of our sinful nature. God said, I'm going to send my son Jesus to save you from hell. And so when you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, then you will not go to hell and you'll spend eternity in heaven. But people take kernels of truth out of God's word and they twist it to make it fit their ideals, their agenda. God is not sending people to hell. Jesus is saving people from hell. It's a good place for an amen. John chapter 8, verse 31 to 32 says this. So Jesus said to the Jews who had, who had believed him, if you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples. Okay, right there. If you abide in my word, you're my disciples. If you abide in it, you listen to it, you walk it out, then you'll be my disciples. And you will know the truth. There's truth in here. This is truth. You will know the truth, Jesus says, and what? And the truth will set you free. That's why the enemy is trying to distort the truth, because the enemy knows the truth will set you free. So the devil tries to distort the truth, because he knows the power that lies in God's word. It'll set you free. It sets people free. People need to hear the truth about a real heaven, one heaven, and one way to get there, and a real hell. People need to hear that sin separates us from God. And how you live here on earth will determine how you spend eternity. Don't allow the enemy to distort the truth, twist the truth of God's word. So what does Jesus do? What does he do? How, how does he respond? Well, he responds with, again, with Scripture. 
And Jesus, he quotes actually Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 16. And he says this in verse uh, Matthew 4, 7. He says, Jesus said to him, again, it is written, you shall not put the Lord your God to the test. Don't do it. You can't put the Lord your, Jesus, every time he was tempted, he responds to the devil with the word of God. That's why we talk so much about reading your word, studying your word, getting it into your heart. It's important that you have the word of God hidden in your heart. 30 years ago, 20, maybe 20 years ago, you know, we say, that, hey, you're not always going to have the Bible with you, so you need to memorize. Absolutely. You're, you're not always going to have the Bible with you. You need to memorize. You need to know. You need to study it so that when you're in conversation, so, so when you're, you know, having these um, dialogues with people that, that you can Stand up for what you believe by what you've read and what you know. So important to be reading God's word. 